Hi, this is Scott Morse from Woody Cabinets Tips and Tricks. The other day there was a thread started on eCabinets forum. Greg wanted to know if there was a way to have three cabinets with one continuous face frame across all three of them. He didn't particularly want to use an assembly uh, due to resizing difficulties and he definitely wanted to have three separate cabinets so that they those cabinets can be assembled, taken to the job, and then the face frame applied after they were installed. Well, I came up with this cabinet. What it is is one single cabinet that can be assembled as three separate cabinets and then the face frame applied after the cabinets are put together and in the house. Let me show you how I did it. What I'm going to start out with is just a one opening base cabinet. Now I have my material set up based on the specifications that Greg is using. He's using an 11 16 thick sheet stock for his ends and deck and I'm not sure about the back but in this case I'm using a quarter inch thick material for my back. Now his face frames, the styles are an inch and three eighths wide material. What we need to do first is go into construction settings and get everything set up. So I'm going to go right into construction settings. What I want to do first is remove my top and on my add shelf settings I'm going to be using a fixed shelf for my decks, so I want to go ahead and put my back inset to be the thickness of my material that I'm using for my back. Now the toe kick, Greg said that he uses a detached toe. I'm going to keep the toe kick on for this example. I'll show you how you can use either or. I've got my height set at three and a half and my inset set at three and a half but what I want to do is uncheck has toe and what's going to happen is it's just going to remove the actual board it's still going to have the cutouts for the toe kick in the left and right end so let's go to the back and I want to completely remove my back now as a general rule I like to remove any insets that I have on a part before I remove it so I'm going to go ahead and change that to zero and I want to go to my deck now and this is important if you have an inset for your bottom on your deck make sure you remove it because it will affect your styles in this case I'm using a formula to control my bottom inset so I'm going to just clear that and change this to zero now let's go to the face frames I want to make sure that if I have a deck float on my face frames I want to get rid of that too so zero now what Greg likes to do is he likes to hold his left and right ends flush to his styles okay and to do that you need to specify a scribe so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the formula editor to control that just in case we change the width of our styles or we change the thickness of our material this will automatically adjust accordingly so I'm going to click on my FX button here and I want to say that my scribe is going to equal my left style width minus my left end thickness okay I'm going to click OK and you see right here we got 11 sixteenths now I want to go over here and do my scribe for my right style and it's basically the same thing just everything is on the right so this will be right style minus the right end thickness I'm gonna click OK OK that takes care of that one thing I did forget though is the partitions okay so let's come back in here right here under add partition settings I want to make sure that the bottom of my partitions or extending down by my toe kick height okay so I'm gonna come right here under bottom inset and my formula editor and I'm gonna say minus my toe kick height I'm gonna click OK and OK now you can see how this these styles extended down past my toe kick here by the width of my bottom rail in this particular case I cannot use my bottom rail at all because I'm going to be using fixed shelves and I want to associate those fixed shelves that are going to be my decks to the, be to the top of what's going to be my bottom rail and you can't associate fixed shelves to your bottom rail or your top rail and you can't associate partitions to your left style or your right style for that I want to use a mid rail you need to go into face frame editor I'm going to go ahead and delete this now you can see these adjust up so they should be 31 inches and they are let's go ahead and add a mid rail I'm going to select that opening and hit M on my keyboard to add a mid rail I want to highlight this opening and I want to adjust the top to zero I'm going to come right here and click on opening locks and we'll go ahead and lock that opening that's opening three and we'll set it to be true and okay 
Now the next thing I want to do is go ahead and get my mid styles in here. So I'm going to select this opening and I'm going to hit the letter S on my keyboard. There's one. I need one more there and I need two here. So that one and that one. Now I can go ahead and equalize these. So I'm going to hold down my control key and select these openings and hit E on my keyboard. And that equalized them. I'm going to go ahead and take care of these. Okay, now what we need to do next is get our partitions in here. So I'm going to go to the partition editor and I'm going to select this opening and hit P on my keyboard. There's that one. I need one more here. P. And over here on this opening, I need one there. And I'm going to select this opening and add one more. So there's those. What I need to do now is adjust these these openings here so that these partitions actually touch the style that I want to associate them to. Now I can associate these to those styles. I'm going to go to Associations. When I select this partition, you can see this one highlight. So I want to go to my mid style here. That one right there, you see it turn blue. And I want to go to the right side of that. So I'm just going to select this box and hit R on my keyboard. And right now this inset is zero. And that's what it needs to be in this particular case. Now if you're using a wider style, you need to accommodate for that. I'm going to click on the next one here. And you see this one highlights. So I want to select my mid style. And I need to go to the left on that one. So L and zero. So come right here. This one is on the left also, so mid style and left. And next one is mid style also, and it needs to be on the right, so R for right. I'm going to click OK, and you'll see these automatically move. And you see the dotted lines, that's telling us which side of that style is each one of these are associated to. Now the next thing we need to do is get our decks in here. I want to use a fixed shelf, so I want to make sure that I got fixed selected right here and I'm just going to hit S to add a shelf. Next one S and S. Now I need to get those touching my mid rail down here or what's going to be my bottom rail. So I'm going to select this opening and I'm going to type 0 right there and I'm going to go ahead and highlight that and hit Control C to copy it to my clipboard. I'm going to hit enter and it's going to move it down. I'll highlight this opening I like that. Control V to paste and enter. And the same thing with this one. So it's got those. Let's take care of our associations here. Let's select this shelf right there. And I want that to be on the top on the, um, the mid rail. So I'm going to say M. Let's go select that. And I want that to be on the top. So T. Now you can leave this at zero if you want to. Generally, I like to hold my decks or fixed shelves down below my rail a little bit. So I'm just going to use one sixteenth of an inch. I'm going to go ahead and highlight that and copy it to my clipboard. Control C and go ahead and do this one. So M, T, and Control V. Do this one and Control V. So that's got all that. Now let's go back to main and let's change the width of this cabinet from 30 inches to 72. So there you go. Everything moved properly. Everything looks real good. What I need to do next is go ahead and get my toe kick cutouts on my partitions. Now I'm going to do just this one right here because they're all identical. I'm going to select it. I'm going to go into the part editor and this is the front of my partition. So I'm going to use my rectangle tool here. I want to make sure I'm start my rectangle off of my part and end it off of my part down here at the bottom. I'm going to click, hit escape, select it again, right click, Cut pocket using geometric shape and cut through and OK. So go back to main, keep the changes, and you can see it's cut out. Now it's not the right size, but we're going to take care of that in the constraint manager. So I'm going to go into constraint manager. I'm going to do my vertical constraints first. Click on that node and that node, and then do my horizontal. OK. Now I need to edit those because I need them to be three and a half, so I'm going to click on edit. I'm going to select this measurement right here, or dimension, and I'm going to type in three and a half. While I'm up here, I'm going to highlight that and Control C to get it on my clipboard. And I can go ahead and click on this one to edit it. And Control V to paste and enter. Well, that one didn't take, so let me go ahead and do that. Control V and enter. And there you go. Let's go back to main. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go through these, take care of those, and I'll be right back. 
Okay, I've got all my toolkit cutouts here. We want to go into the stretcher editor and set up our for our backs because I want to put my backs in first. I want to right click and go into construction settings. Now what I've got is I've got a stretcher width of two and a half. I want to use a left right stretcher up down orientation and I've got a full dado on the left and the right. And in construction preferences I've got my dado depth set to be three eighths. One thing that I want to do is I want to make sure that my grain direction is 90 degrees and of course I've got one quarter inch thick material selector for my back. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to select my left end and this partition here. Add a stretcher and OK. So there that is. What I would do next is go ahead and put my other two backs in here so that I could go through and adjust them all. But I'm going to show you just this one opening right here. Everything else is basically the same. I'm going to go ahead and select this stretcher. I'm going to go adjust stretcher and advance. In set 1, I want to be set to the top of my left end here. And then in set 2, I want it to be on the bottom of my fixed shelf. In set 4, I need it to be on the back of my left end. So let's go ahead and take care of that. In set 1 there, I'm going to hit L to select my left end and T for top. Okay. In set 2 is going to be on my fixed shelf there. Right now it's on the top. Select that and hit B for the bottom and now inset 4 is going to be on my left end so L for left end and B for back. I'm going to hit enter and OK. Now I can go ahead and set these insets. Everything's going to be 0 so I'm going to type 0. I'm going to go ahead and copy that to my clipboard. Control C, lock and inset 2 is 0 so Control V, lock and then inset 4, Control V and lock and go ahead and lock 5 and 6. Make sure you don't forget to lock those. I'm going to click done and I'm going to hit control end to look at my back here and everything looks good. So let's go home. The next thing I want to do is get my nailer in here and my toe kick. Okay, so I'm going to go to construction settings and this time I want my width to be four and a half. That's the width of my nailer. The toe kick's not going to matter because we're going to make it adjust automatically. This time I want to use butt construction. I need to make sure I've got my 11 sixteenths uh, plywood selected there. And I want to make sure I change my grain direction back to zero and OK. Now I can go ahead and add both of those. So select my end and my partition and add a stretcher and OK. There's that one. Let's go ahead and get the next one in here. Add a stretcher. Okay, so both of them are in there, and of course I would go ahead and get get them both in each one of these openings. Now sometimes when you got stretchers on top of stretchers like this, when you select one, it may not highlight. You may not see it highlight. That's because it's actually selected the one that's underneath. So when I click on this, you see that it did indeed highlight. If it doesn't, go ahead and just select Adjust Stretcher, and it'll let you know if you don't have it selected. Let's go to Advance in the top. It's going to be on the left end or inset one, left end and the top of that. So T for top. Inset four, I want it to be on the stretcher that we just put in here for our back, okay? And I want it on the front, so I'm just going to click OK. And I've got zero copied to my clipboard, so control V and lock. And then inset four, control V and lock. Go ahead and lock five and six. And done. Go ahead and take care of my toe kick now. Advanced. Now this time in set one, we want to be on this fixed shelf here that we're using for our deck. So let's select in set one and scroll down till that turns blue. And it's already selected the bottom for me, so we're good to go. In set two, we want it to be on the left end. So L for left end. And we want it on the bottom, so we're good to go there. Now in set three, I want it to be on my mid rail that we're using for the bottom style. So I'm going to hit M and select here and it's already selected the back for me so we're good to go. I'm going to click OK and everything's going to be zero except for inset three so I'm going to say control V lock control V lock. Now inset three this needs to be whatever our inset is for our toe kick. In my case it's three and a half so I'm going to type in three and a half and lock it. Now one thing you want to remember is that if you change your inset on your toe kick, you need to come back into the stretcher editor and adjust inset 3 accordingly. I'm going to go ahead and lock 
inset 5 and inset 6 and go done. So if that's got those, the next thing I want to do is put my top stretcher front in here and my top stretcher back. So I'm going to right click, go to construction settings and change this to two and a half. That's what I use for my top stretchers there. And I want a front back orientation this time. And again, everything's on my left end and this partition. So go ahead and add that stretcher. And OK. Add one more. And of course, I would go ahead and add two to each one of these openings. Let's go ahead and adjust this one. Advanced. And again, we're working with the left end on inset one. So L for left end. And we want it on the top. So T for top. Inset three, we're going to set on our top rail. So T for top rail and we want it on the back of the top rail so we're good to go there i'm going to click ok and change this to zero so control v since i have zero on my clipboard there and inset three control v and lock and make sure we lock five and six click done and there's that one let's go ahead and get this one now this time we're dealing with inset one and inset four okay and i want inset four to be on the front side of this nailer here. So I'm going to go ahead and select inset one. It's going to be on the left end and the top of it. And inset four is going to be on my nailer stretcher there and the front of that. So all that's good. I'm going to go OK and Control V lock and Control V and lock. So that's good to go. Let's click done. So that's how you go about getting those stretchers in there. I want to go ahead and take care of these other two openings, and I'll see you back in Maine. Let's see how this thing resizes and see if we got any problems. I'm going to go ahead and change my width to, say, for example, 60 inches. And let's go ahead and make the height something like 32 and the depth 21. And there it is. All that looks good. What I want to do is check out my toe kick here. So I'm going to go back into construction settings. I'm going to take my toe kick and let's see what happens when we select detach toe. Now you can see how that toe kick or that stretcher there automatically moved for me and if I were going to use a detached toe for this cabinet, I would make sure I remove my part editor cuts from my partitions, and then I would make these stretchers right here a phantom part. What I want to do is I want to see what happens when I resize these openings. So let's go into face frame editor, and let's say, for example, we want to put a sink in here, and we need, I don't know, maybe 33 inches for this opening. So I want to make sure I've got both selected, and I want to change that to 33. And now I need to change this one. Let's go back to main and make sure everything regenerates properly. So that looks pretty good. That's going to wrap it up for this video, guys. I hope this video helped you out. If it did, how about give me a thumbs up? And hey, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, be sure you subscribe so you can get all my latest tips and tricks. As always, thank you for watching and have a good day.